You know, the world keeps slipping into the future, right? Keeps changing. Everything is changing all the time. Time was not that long ago. You had a nice headphone, you plugged it into your smartphone, and you had great tunes, great sounds. Now, you can't really plug in because most phones don't have headphone jacks. So, if you're on the go, you got to use a Bluetooth headphone, most likely, right? Okay, it's a drag. I don't think have Bluetooth headphones sound that great and certainly cost more for inferior sound. So I've never been in the cheering squad for Bluetooth headphones. But then along comes Hi-Fi Man, makers of fantastic sounding planar magnetic headphones. And they make this model called the Ananda BT for Bluetooth. It costs a thousand dollars. You know what? It sounds really, really good. But it's a thousand dollars. That's out of range for most people, right? So what do they do? They come up with this model. This is the Hi-Fi Man Deva. It's three hundred dollars. <laughs> now we're talking, right? Okay. Tell me more. Okay, I will. It is like all Hi-Fi Man headphones, a planar magnetic design. It's an open-backed headphone, meaning you can hear the world around you and also means you can hear all the noise around you. And that's, that's kind of a drag, so it's not the best headphone to use in, in noisy environments. Got it. So, where do we stand here? Well, let me tell you some details about the design. So it's an 18 ohm headphone, because though it is a Bluetooth headphone, you can use it with a cable. Like, you know, the old days, the good old days, a wire. <laughs> and, I like that. Now, that's, it's hardly unique in that, in that uh, category, but I don't know of any other $300 Bluetooth headphones that can touch this one for sound quality with the wire. As for the Bluetooth part, it's not built in. See, on this side, this is the left ear cup, this is the dongle. This is the Bluetooth dongle, which is basically a headphone amp and a Aptex HD uh, dongle. So the good part is that since this is removable, it has to be, that's where the headphone jack is. If there's ever, if Bluetooth ever invents something better than Aptex HD, well, maybe Hi-Fi Man will make a new dongle and you'll be up to speed with the latest and greatest Bluetooth. Uh, who knows? I don't know. I'm no, not making any promises here. But I can say that what I like about the Deva is that it's kind of a split personality design, right? On the go, you listen with the Bluetooth dongle. When you're at home, you put the dongle aside and you hook it up to your hi-fi system. I listen to it both ways, and I gotta tell you, it sounds a lot better with a wire, but you knew that, right? You knew I was gonna say that, right? But it sounds perfectly good with the dongle. What a silly word, dongle. Anyway, um, so I did listen, I, I did my due diligence, I listened, dongled Bluetooth with my iPhone so it wasn't uh, Aptex HD, it was a different codec, I forget which one, but whatever, it sounded fine. It sounded remarkably open and fine and beautiful. But then with the wire, I listened at my uh, computer with my Brooklyn, my MyTech Brooklyn DAC headphone amplifier, <laughs> and the world expanded around my head. It just opened up. The bass was deeper, tighter, blah, blah, blah. It was more dynamic. It was more spacious. It just, it sounded better in every freaking way. But that's a very expensive headphone amplifier. It's, I think, $2,000. So I thought, well, that's yeah, okay, great. So it sound, this sounds fantastic with the $2,000 headphone amplifier DAC combination. So that's not very real world. Who's going to... $300 headphone, $2,000 headphone amplifier. That's kind of a nutty combination. So I rummaged through my drawer and I found my AudioQuest Dragonfly Red, which last time I checked is about $200. It is a DAC slash headphone amplifier. Played a Deva through that. Okay, it wasn't as good as the as the Brooklyn DAC, but it was pretty darn good. I just wanted to explore the capabilities of this $299 headphone. And as, my, as I put in my hours listening, 
it occurred to me, I should, I should point this out. This is a really comfortable headphone. It's very light. They don't list the weight, I don't think. Uh, it's very heavily padded headband, really nice ear pads. Uh, everything about it is, is built for comfort, <laughs> not for speed. No, it's, it's really nice. It is plastic. The ear cups are plastic to keep the weight down. That's just got to be if you want to have a, a light, comfortable headphone. But it was very enjoyable. It, you know, listening to this headphone for hours on end, I, it was one of those. I had to keep reminding myself, this is a $299 headphone. It is seriously transparent, especially in its wired mode. A Nanda Bluetooth BT is $1,000. And this one, uh, Deva, is $300. So if a Nanda BT is a 10 in the rating scale, right? If that one's a 10, this one is six or seven. That's pretty good for a third the price or less than a third the price. So we were making good progress. As for listening, what, so Steve, what kind of music were you listening to? I'll, uh, I'm going to tell you right now. So. I, I, I pulled out this Al Cooper Live at the Bottom Line CD. It's actually a two CD set. It's recorded in the early 90s. So, you know, if you don't know who Al Cooper is, I will uh, elucidate. Uh, he played on some Bob Dylan records, some of his best ones ever, Bob Dylan's. He also had a band called The Blues Project. He was the founder and original leader of Blood, Sweat and Tears. He went on to produce many, many other people, and he's just an all-round amazing musician. And for this live bottom line set, he played uh, music from different parts of his career. He also played, amazingly enough, French horn on the Rolling Stones. You can't always get what you want. So he got around. And these performances at the bottom line are fantastic. <laughs> and he just brings these songs to life. And I'm sitting there with the Deva and listening, thinking, it, I'm sorry, I keep repeating myself, but the transparency of this headphone with good recording, with a wire, played with a wire, really floored me. So, here's what I did. I pulled out my Mass Drop Sennheiser HD 6XX headphone. Also an open back headphone, but a wired headphone. And I compared the two. Now, the Sennheiser HD 6XX is kind of a standard for a lot of people as a great sounding, affordable headphone, which I believe is around $200. But it's, you know, a near twin of the Sennheiser HD 600 or 650, and that one is, is more money. So I thought this was a fair comparison. And here's what I heard. <laughs> the, uh, the Deva is, is more transparent, definitely more open definitely more dynamically alive. I will say that the one thing I might, I might grudgingly admit that the Sennheiser's mid-range is a little warmer and rounder and more natural, those kind of words. But overall, it was no contest. <laughs> the David just stomped all over the Sennheiser HD6 XX. So I played uh, The Clash. I'm, lately I've been in a clash groove and I played Sandinista, which I almost never play, but I was streaming it over uh, Kobuz. And I was just thinking, what an amazing recording because it's got everything. It's got pop, it's got reggae, it's got the clash sound, big time, quiet tunes, loud tunes. It goes all over the place. And it was a terrific experience. And again, I was comparing the Deva to the Sennheiser HD6XX. Yeah. Oh, I was rocking out, in other words. And yes, again, no contest. I'm going to stop repeating myself doing the comparison because <laughs> it, the differences were so great. It, it was senseless to continue. I have been at various times in my life a fan of the band The National, and especially Matt Berninger's vocals. I mean, he's got the big, deep voice. And... Uh, the music of the National comes and goes for me, but he's he's always good, right? And he has this solo record called, or a single or whatever, Serpentine Prison. And I hope this is, is going to be an album because it's just so good. And I like him out of the National, actually. And uh, that voice, that big, big, deep, deep voice, wow, came booming out of the Deva and bounced around my, my noggin here. And it was 
freaking great. I'm going I'm to stop now. I'm going to stop giving you examples because it's, it's senseless to continue. It's a great sounding headphone. And by the way, if you need to use it with your smartphone wirelessly, you can. But I have a feeling you're going to spend a lot more time listening to it with a wire at home. And by the way, it doesn't come with a headphone case, so it makes it more of a home headphone anyway. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and this is, once again, the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Right now, coming to you four and five times a week. Oh, so please subscribe to this thing, the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And when you do, uh, after you click on subscribe, you'll see an icon of a bell. Hit that bell so you'll be notified every time. Not only is there a new episode of this thing, called the Audiophiliac Daily Show, there might be a live stream. I did one just the other day, and I have a feeling there'll be more. And if you're notified, you and you're on your computer, you will instantly know that something incredible is happening. <laughs> or not. Um, but while you're here, uh, you should check out the playlist. There are playlists for many, many, many more headphone reviews, and speaker reviews, and electronic reviews, and music reviews tons and tons of material, material efforts of mine over the last, going on almost three years. Uh, by the way, I would be remiss if I did not mention the Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. And if you can't write that down, I got you covered. It's in, down there in the description box. A link. A link is now provided. How cool is that? Well, okay, I now am fully done, fully complete. So all I can say is thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.